Hello and good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another Kids Connection program. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through different songs, Bible stories, and activities. Today, we're going to play a game. We're going to have some fun. And I hope you guys stick around for the story that comes afterwards by your teacher because they prepared something very special for you this week. Thank you so much for joining us. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new Kids Connection program. And if you're a regular, it's always good to have you guys back. Today, this week, has been a very, very interesting week. A lot of things has happened. School started for, for some of you. School started back for some of you. And school started for the first time to some of the kids. How have you been? Are you enjoying your first week of school? A lot of things are different. Are you homeschooling? Are you going to the academy? Are you seeing a teacher? Is, is mom or dad helping you with your, with your school? I want to hear from you guys. And we love to hear from kids. So ask mom and dad to help you. Send us a little note. VD kidsconnection at gmail.com. We are happy to have you here in our program today. It was a hot week. Last week we played that game with the water bottle, remember? And today I have my water here again. But we're not playing a game with the water this week. Today we're going to be playing a guessing game. So stick around. It's going to be right after the missionary story. We're going to be playing a game with you guys. So call mom and dad. Maybe they can play with you too. And this is something fun to play as a family at home, okay? So to get our program started, we're going to sing our song of the day today. And our song of the day is called Made for This. Now, I was made for this, and I'll explain why we're singing this song after later in our program. Join us as we sing our song of the day, Made for This.
now was made for this. Whoa, that was an exciting song. I love singing at Kids Connection, and I hope you guys like it too. Do you like our songs? Amazing. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to know that you guys like to sing and participate on our songs and our activities right here at Kids Connection. Now I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. We invite you to be with us today as we worship your name. Be with all the, all the boys and girls, moms, uncles, and whoever they're watching with at home. Protect them. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us one more time. Now, let me ask you something. I want you guys at home, whatever you are, get up right now. Sitting, now you stand up. Okay, now I want you to ask mom and dad for a luggage. Put all your clothes in that luggage and go to Albania to be a missionary in Albania. And you're going to preach the gospel there for an entire year. And you're going to tell people about Jesus. Wait, you can't do that. Yeah, but there's a family that heard a call from God to go to Albania. Do you know where Albania is? is on the other side of the world and they listen to the voice of god let's watch their story and see what they are doing in albania a missionary family packed their bags and prepared for a new adventure in albania god called delmar nati and three-year-old clara to serve in the 1040 window we are both from Brazil. I think God placed in our hearts the desire to serve in a different place, in a different environment, in a place where we wouldn't be like comfortable, something that will challenge both our ministries. And we realized very soon some of the challenges that we will face preaching and the gospel, bringing the gospel here to this country. For years, Albania was a communist territory banning religion and declaring it the world's first and only atheist state. Communism collapsed in 1990, but even today, religion doesn't seem to be a priority for most people. There are only about 120 Adventists out of nearly 3 million people living in Albania. Delmar, Nati, and Clara were assigned to serve in the city of Korcha at the country's first Adventist church built in 1994. The first year was especially difficult. Despite their efforts, there wasn't a single baptism or anyone interested in Bible studies. In the end of my first year, I was really discouraged because I couldn't see anything really big happening in the church. You know, I couldn't see anything really even changing in the church. We associate big things with good numbers, big numbers. So in my first year, I was trying to do my best. I was working a lot to do something big or something important, according to my understanding. At the peak of Del Mar's frustration, he received a call to pastor a large church in Brazil. This offer seemed to come at the perfect time, and he shared the exciting news with his wife. I came and talked to my wife. You know, we got a call to go back to Brazil. What do you think? We're not doing anything here anyway. Why we don't accept that and we just leave? And that's it. She looked to me. She said, do you think that we did everything that we could here in Albania? Do you, do you really think that it's time for us to leave this place? She said, I personally think that we should stay, that the Lord has something prepared for us here. And maybe he wants to, to teach us something here and he, he still wants to use us. So they declined the opportunity in Brazil and prayed about how God could use them in this challenging part of the world. Delmar and Nati noticed that there were a lot of kids in their neighborhood. Maybe this was a good place to start. And then we also realized that Clara could be a good missionary to them. Because every time that uh, we were coming to our home or leaving our home, and the kids, they saw Clara. So they start saying, hey, Clara, Clara, let's play, let's do this, let's do that. We prepare like a, a place to play volleyball. And then we say to them, come, let's play together. And, and this just happened naturally. And the kids start coming to church and they start coming every week to church, like two times a week, playing volleyball, playing with us. And in a few weeks, they knew me as a pastor, they knew Nati, they knew very well Clara. And we were so excited because now the church was full. 
They recruited help in the form of two Adventist volunteers from Brazil and community volunteers. One of the members, Angela, brought her friend Fation to church with her every few months. Fation and I, we just connect as a friend and we start talking about God. We start studying the Bible together. I invite him to be part of our group and he just was excited. He was really engaged with us. And he said, you know, that's what I want. I want to participate. I want to help these kids. I want to serve this community. And in just a few weeks, he was already helping us with the kids. And the kids also loved him. All these activities just brought us together. And I had the privilege to baptize Fation as my first baptism here in Albania. And I was so happy to see that the Lord was answering to our prayers. The love of Jesus touched Fation's heart, and he now shares this with others. When we follow this Jesus method in other peoples in the community, I pray for the hearts to get warm and, and to follow Jesus. This church has seen many new faces in the past few months. Church members are connecting with the community through a global mission urban center of influence. Nati uses her gift of music to teach classes to the kids. They love learning to play the violin. The center also offers language courses and a health club with plans to branch out with more programs. So when you try something new and then you see that it's working, it already gives you like more hope. And then this also gave us motivation to try different things, not just not one approach. Please pray for this ministry as it continues to grow and integrate into the community. And pray for missionary families like Delmar, Nati, and Clara, who are serving on the front lines of mission. When we were called to come as a missionary, I thought that I was ready to change the world. But it took maybe one year to realize that before I do anything, the Lord was trying to change me. Thank you for supporting the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. <laughs> okay, você gosta de morar na Albânia? Sim? Wow! That was an incredible story. Did you see how the little girl how God is using the little girl, the daughter, to preach the gospel and to reach people and children, you too can be a part of something great. And God can use you to preach the gospel and to tell others about His love. Maybe not going to Albania like this family did, but you can help them with our financial support. You can help them with your offerings. Ask mom and dad to click on the link that we have just above the video where it says my missionary offering and ask them to help the missionaries with the offerings today. Thank you so much for participating and with the offering and being a part of this sharing, uh, being a part of the missionaries sharing the love of Jesus and other places of the world. Thank you. Now, comes to a part of the program where we are going to play that game that I told you. And I have some, I have a piece of paper here. And this is the guessing game, okay? So here is how our guessing game is going to happen. I'm going to read you a description. You know what description is? Description is when I tell you something without telling you what it is. And you are going to guess who that is. I'm going to use it as an example. This one is not part of the game, okay? But uh, here's how I'm going to say. I wear glasses. I am tall. I preach. I am a pastor of Vallejo Drive Church. Who is he? Pastor James Kyle. Right? Got it. Okay. So that's how we're going to do. I'm going to share some characteristics of some animals and you are going to guess which animal I am talking about. Ready? Here we go. The first one, the first one says, I live 
in the woods. First clue. Second, I am very big and furry. Third clue, I have a big nose and a little tail. Do you know who it is? Do you know what it is yet? Yes, no? Here comes the last clue. I eat fish and berries. I am a bear. Did you guess a bear? I hope you did. If you guessed a bear, you were right. Okay, so that's how we're playing our game. Here comes the next one. The next one is, I am soft and furry pet. Okay, clue number one. Clue number two, I have four legs and a long tail. Third clue, I have sharp teeth and cloth. Last clue, I like to chase mice. A cat! Very good, you guessed a cat. The point of the game is to try to guess before I tell you what animal that is and before I give you the last clue, okay? Very good. Now let's go ahead and go to our next clue for animal. Here I come. I have a little tail. My no, oh, excuse me. I live on a farm. Little tail lives on a farm. Third clue. I like to play on the mud. Ah! Oh! Do you know? And my nose is called a snout. And I say oink oink. Who is it? I am a pig. Good job, good job. All right, that was an easy one, okay? Here comes another one, and I think this one is also a little bit easy. But here it comes. I have four legs. I'm very smart and like to play. Mm. Third clue. I like to smell things. Who does this? And the last clue is, I can wag my tail. I am a dog. Good job. Did you guess after the first, second, third, or fourth clue? Ha! I would like to know what that is. All right. Here comes the next one. Aha. Let's see if you can guess this one and how many clues do you need? I am very, very big. I like to eat peanuts. Who likes to eat peanuts and is very big? I think you know who. I have two big ears. And my long nose is called the trunk. I am a elephant good job good job an elephant that was a good one here comes the next one this one might be a little hard at the beginning but you're gonna get it I am small and shy mm. I eat bugs who is small and eat bugs Clue number three, I have eight legs, eight. Some of you already know, and here comes the last clue. I catch my food on my web. Ha! I am a spider. Good job, good job. A spider, very small and shine, has eight legs and catches the food, their, their food on a web. All right, here comes the next one. I have a tail. I can fly. Okay, have a tail, can fly. Clue number three. 
I am covered with colorful feathers. Okay, getting there? Some of you are seeing birds? Yes, but it's one specific bird. And here comes the next clue. I can whistle and I can talk. Whoa, who can whistle and talk? And I am a parrot. I am a parrot. A parrot can talk, it can whistle, has colorful feathers. Did you guess parrot? If you did, good for you. If not, here's another chance for you to guess a different animal or bird or let's see what it is. All right. I live in lakes and rivers. Clue number two. I eat fish and birds. <gasps> eat fish and birds? Who lives in the river and eat fish and birds? Here comes another one. I have four legs and a long tail. Dun, dun, dun. Some of you already know, others not yet. It's getting complicated and I'm gonna give you the last clue. The last clue is I have lots of pretty teeth. I am a crocodile. Yes, a crocodile lives in the river and lakes and eat birds and fish and has a long tail and a lot of teeth. And he's calling himself, he's, he's saying that he has a lot of pretty teeth. I don't know if they're that pretty, but he has a lot of teeth. It's a crocodile. Did you guess crocodile? Good job if you did. If not, here's another chance for you to guess what I am. Here we go. I have wings, but I'm not a bird. I want to know if you guess on the first try. Okay, here comes clue number two. I am small and colorful. Clue number three. I live in gardens and fields and forests. Who lives in forests, gardens, and fields? Has wings, but it's not a bird. And colorful wings. Here's the next, here's the last clue. I used to be a caterpillar. Ha ha! Hey, I am a butterfly. Good job, butterfly. Yes, I hope you guessed butterfly because butterflies used to live on a cocoon before they become butterflies, right? Okay, and here comes the last one. The last one. I live in a house. Oh, no, 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 let me start the other way around. Clue number one. I have two legs, two wings, and a tail. Clue number two. I eat worms and bugs. hard so far clue number three and this is where a lot of you are gonna guess my house is called a coop ha yes you already know and if you don't know here comes the last clue and the last clue is I lay eggs <gasps> I am a chicken Good job. I want to know how many you guessed right. And if you were able to guess some to guess some of the, the the animals or reptiles or birds on after the first clue that I gave you. I would like to know. Okay? Well, thanks for playing. Did everybody guess? Is everybody having fun at home? Mom, dad, you, sister, or maybe you're you're with dad or with uncle or with grandparents? I hope you guys are having fun with our game and you had fun with our game today. Now, why am I sharing this game with you? Why did we play this game? Well, because I want you guys to know that every animal, I used a description 
or I used, I, I told you who they were, what they were, what they ate, what they live, where they live. Um, I told you how big they were and their shape. And based on what I told you is that you were able to guess who I was talking about. Well, in today's story, in our lesson, we are going to learn about something that it's called integrity. Integrity? What is integrity? Well, let me just say that integrity is doing the right thing every time. We have to remember that integrity is having the choice to do what's right and do what's right. Let me ask you a couple of questions. And you're going to answer that on your own head. Okay? So the question is, did you eat a sandwich for breakfast? Mm. The next question, do you like Brussels sprouts? Interesting. Now I want you to answer something else. Do you have more than six pairs of shoes? Do you? Oh, uh, let's see. I I don't know if I do. I think I might just have around six pair of shoes. Interesting. Now, here comes the next question. Do you have a pet pig living with you in the house? <gasps> I don't. I have birds. I have a dog. Speaking of birds, one of these days I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you something about birds, okay? Now, are you the youngest in your family? Okay. Yes? No? Now, why am I asking you these questions? Because based on what you thought the answer were to these questions, is telling me who you are, okay? You are telling the truth about those questions that I just asked you. Now I'm gonna ask you some harder questions, okay? And I want you to answer those questions out loud. If you are with someone or if you're by yourself, I want you to answer the questions I'm about to ask you now, and the questions are going to get a little more serious, okay? Did you talk back to your parents this week? Yes or no? Hmm. Next question. Did you exclude someone from playing a game? For example, were you playing a game and you didn't want to play that game with someone else, so you just played by yourself and did not invite someone that wanted to play that game with you, either your sister, your cousin, your brother, or, or, or a friend? Was it online or was it at home? Did you ignore someone when you were playing a game? That's another question. My next question is, pay attention. When mom and dad asked you to put your toys away, did you hide some toys instead of putting them in the right place? Yes or no? Interesting. Here comes the next question. The next question is, were you too lazy to help mom and dad this week? And you ignored mom when she asked you to do something 
to help around the house. And you pretended that you didn't hear mom and you hoped that she forgot. Did you ignore mom or dad when they were asking you to do something this week? Those were hard questions. But if you answer them, if you were if if your answers were true from the heart and it told the truth, that is called integrity. Integrity is when you tell the truth, is when you say something that you did, even though it is not right. Even though it is shameful, you still told the truth about what you did or what you didn't do. Remember, integrity is doing what is right in every decision you make. Remember that God asks us to live in integrity. Should I do this? Yes or no? Should I tell the truth? Is, te is telling the truth going to embarrass me? Am I going to lie about something? That is called integrity. Just like the animals, the description of the animals and birds and reptiles tell us who they are. What we do tells other people who we are. If we lie, it'll tell other people that we don't have integrity. And if we tell the truth, it'll tell people that we live according to the integrity that God wants me to live. I hope you like playing the game with us and I hope that you live in integrity. Today, we are going to learn how to live in integrity with our classroom and with our teachers. So stick around, listen to what your teachers have to say afterwards, after the Kids Connection program, and we will learn more about living a life with integrity. Now, we're going to sing our song of the day again because I was made for this. God made me for a reason. And the reason that God made me is to live with integrity. Let's sing our song of the day one more time. Get up and let's sing our I was made for this.
Now let's close our program with a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being with us during this Kids Connection program. Thank you because we are learning how to live with integrity, live like you want us to live. Help us to learn each day more about you. And as we go into our classrooms now, help us to see how to live with integrity. Bless and protect each boy and girl as, as we go on still fighting this pandemic. Keep us safe and bring us back together again next week for another program. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in another Kids Connection program. I hope you guys come back next week. Don't forget that tomorrow we have Kid to Kid at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Zoom. Just go all the way to the bottom of our Kids Connection page and see the Kid to Kid link there. Go ahead and click on that advertisement tomorrow and join us for Kid to Kid where we play a new game for uh, for all the boys and girls. Now you also want a visit from Kid. Kid is ready to visit you. A couple weeks ago it was too hot. I didn't want to take Kid out, but now Kid is actually okay to go out and start visiting kids again. So this weekend we are going to visit two families. I'll show you guys next week what we did for Kids Connection. Excuse me for uh, visits kids, uh, kids visiting the kids, and I want to show you guys who we visited uh, this weekend. Okay. Also. I'm going to encourage you guys to scroll down to our website. On our website, there are some activity pages that we upload here. Those activity pages are some fun things for you to do. Color, questions, answers, guessing. It's all fun in different ages, three years old and seven, seven, through, seven through 12. So I encourage you guys to come back, print those pages, ask mom and dad to help you if you need print those pages, have some fun with mom and dad in the afternoon uh, making those activities, okay? Last thing that I want to tell you guys is that today on our worship service, it is a program specially for kids. I'm going to invite you guys to stick around. There are some kids that are participating in our worship service today uh, with parents and, and with pastors. So, there is a lot going on for kids today at our worship service. So 11 o'clock, go to our Facebook page or our website and click on Worship Online and watch our program today. I hope you guys enjoyed the fun time that we had together here playing the game and having some activities. Come back next week. And right now, stick around for your classroom teacher that is going to share a story about integrity. Thank you so much for coming, guys. I will see you next week. Love you. Miss you. Until then, God keep you safe. Bye-bye. Good morning, boys and girls. Come on in. We're happy that you've joined us on our online Sabbath school today. We're going to sing our greeting song, so go ahead and ring whatever instruments you have at your home. And let's get ready to sing good morning to you. Good morning to you. today and welcome you. I'd like to welcome Sky and Paul, Ethan and Ellis, Sunny, Rio and Gia, Amy and Camden, Reese, happy birthday this month, Sammy and Carlina, Tyel and Aiden, Vida and Max, Caitlin, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, Estella, Jax, Janie and Jade, Josiah, welcome. Happy birthday, Nicholas, Federico, and Francisco, 
Will and Mia, Andrea, Joshua, Joy and Jael, Luke and John, Cody, Benjamin, Aaliyah and Ethan, JR and Seth, and Zori and her new baby. Welcome everybody, I hope you have a good time today. Well, I wanna play a little game with you today to start out our lesson. Now I'm gonna say an animal, well actually I'm gonna make the sound of the animal, and you think about what you think the animal is. The first one is, hoo, 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 hoo. what do you think that animal is? Well, yes, it's my friend, the monkey. He made the sound like a monkey, so you knew that it was a monkey, right? What about this one? Bah, what do you think that is? Well, it's my little friend, the sheep. Now, since he made a bawing sound, you knew it was a sheep, right? The last one goes like this. Roar! Now, that could be a lot of different kinds of animals. What do you think? Roar! Well, it is our friend, the woolly bear. Now, the sounds help you to know what kind of animals they were. Today, we're going to talk about integrity. And integrity helps people to know that we are followers and friends of Jesus. Integrity means doing the right thing no matter what. Even if everyone else is doing the wrong thing, if we have integrity, we will do the right thing. And that shows other people that we love Jesus. Well, for the past five weeks, we have been studying about Paul. Paul was an important missionary when the church first started. We've been talking about how he started a church in Thessalonica. I want to introduce to you a friend who has come from Thessalonica to tell us about Paul. Well, hello everybody. My name is Hannah and I am from Thessalonica. My friend has asked me to come and tell you a few things about Paul. I used to know him back in Thessalonica a long time ago. Paul was really good at praying for us, me and my friends. He prayed constantly for us. He taught us how to follow Jesus. He told us that he prayed for us. He told us how important it is to keep praying and not to give up. He wanted us to pray and tell the good news of Jesus to everybody we met. He asked us to pray for him and his friends that they would be rescued because wherever they went, people were very mean to them because they didn't want to hear what he had to say. Now, Paul was an encourager. He used to encourage us. He sent us letters all the time to tell us how to follow Jesus and he knew that we were struggling with some things, so he gave us directions how to live a good life for Jesus. He wanted to tell us that we would have a reward if we kept on doing the good things that he had taught us. We loved to read his letters, and we read them over and over, and then we let other people read them too. Wow, he really wrote some encouraging letters. He wanted to remind us of all the things that he had taught us about God and following Jesus. Some people thought that Paul was a troublemaker, but he told us how important it was to get along with each other. He didn't want us to be fighting. Sometimes people didn't like what he said and that's why they thought he was a troublemaker. He wrote that if you don't work, then you shouldn't eat. You have to work for what you get. The people who liked watching other people's business did not like what Paul said. He called them busybodies. Whoa, I wouldn't want to be a busybody, would you? I wish you could have seen their faces. They did not like Paul telling them what to do. Well, Paul was a hard worker. And even though he deserved to be paid for following Jesus and telling others about Jesus, he did not take money from us. He didn't even want to take food from us. If we made him some food, he wanted to pay for it. Well, I was sometimes a little bit upset because I wanted to make him something special, but he always wanted to pay me for it. He always thought of others. 
Well, if Paul were here right now, do you know what I would say to him? I would say, thank you. Thank you for being the right example so that we could learn about Jesus. I'm sure it was not always easy. Thank you for never giving up on God and us. Thank you for being an encouraging person and always letting us know if we were doing the right thing. Thank you for reminding us that God is faithful and he gives us peace. Thank you for telling us how to do the right thing and thank you for your prayers. But most of all, thank you for coming to my city and telling us about Jesus. I don't know if we ever would have heard about Jesus if it had not been for you. I'm glad I could tell you about Paul. He was definitely a wonderful person and I will hope you will read your letters from him because the letters are also to you to encourage you and to help you in your walk with Jesus. Well, boys and girls, did you like hearing about Paul from my friend Hannah? She really knew Paul quite well, and I'm glad Paul came and told her about Jesus. He told a lot of other people in many different cities. I don't know if Paul hadn't come and told everybody about Jesus, we might still have learned about Jesus, but he was very important in telling other people about Jesus. We can be missionaries just like Paul was. We can tell people that we know the good news of Jesus, that Jesus lived on earth, that he lived a good life and did not sin. He helped many, many people. Then he died on the cross for us so that we could go to heaven. He rose again so that we could go to heaven with him. Now, God wants to have a relationship with you through his son, Jesus. And if you want to have a relationship with Jesus, there are some things that you should do. You should pray all the time like Paul did. And you should read your Bible. And you should try to do all of the right things that you can find to do. I hope that you'll think about that. The, the more you talk to Jesus, the more you read your Bible, the more you try to do the right things, the closer you will become to Jesus. Now, do you remember what the word integrity means? We've talked about it a little bit this month. Integrity is doing the right thing all the time. I'm going to read you two different stories and you tell me what you think and you could tell mommy and daddy, since I can't really see you, but you can tell mommy and daddy what you think is the right thing to do. So listen to this story. A boy named Gabriel, his mom told him he needed to clean up his room, pick up his clothes and put his toys away before he could watch TV. Well, he started picking up his toys, but while he was picking them up, he started to play with them. And that's kind of easy to do, isn't it? I know I do that sometimes. And while he was still trying to pick up things, he heard his favorite TV show come on. And he thought to himself, hmm, if I just watch one TV show and then come back and finish my room, it will be okay, won't it? What do you think? Would it be all right to disobey mommy? Or should he finish picking up his room before he goes to watch TV? You tell mommy and daddy what you think. Well, here's another one. And I think you know the answer to that first story. He should finish picking up his toys before he goes to watch TV. Now here's the second story. When Lily saw her friends carrying their projects into class, she suddenly remembered that the project was due today and she had forgotten to do it. She heard another one of her friends say to the teacher that he accidentally left his project in the car. Well, she thought about telling the teacher that she forgot her project at home, but that would be a lie, wouldn't it? So what do you think? Should she tell the teacher she forgot it at home or should she tell the teacher that she forgot to do it? You tell mommy and daddy what you think. Yeah, the right thing to do is always to tell the truth. That's called integrity, doing the right thing, not being tempted to do what you know you should not do. With God's help, we can do the right thing. 
God can make us strong inside to say yes to the right choice and no to the wrong choice. Every time we are tempted, we need to pause and ask God for help to do the right thing. Now, for the last five weeks, we've been memorizing this verse, and I think that maybe you know it pretty well by now. So let's go ahead and do it together, okay? Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to His glorious kingdom. Let's try that again. Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to His glorious kingdom. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. Let's do it one more time, okay? Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to His glorious kingdom. That's from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. And I think you probably know that very, very well, and maybe you'll remember it for a really long time. Well, God wants us to make the right choices every day, one choice at a time. When you're tempted to say that you're sick and don't want to go to school, you get up and get dressed and get ready and go anyway. If your teacher says, did you bring your homework? And you didn't do it, you tell her, I forgot to do it. That's the right choice to make. If your friend is being mean to someone else, and you need to tell them and say, that's not right, you shouldn't be doing that. That's the right thing to do, to tell them that they shouldn't be doing that. When your mom tells you to do something, you do it with a helpful attitude. If we want to live good lives for God with integrity, we must make the right choice over and over again. Our actions will prove that we have integrity. Paul was a good example of a person who had integrity. He told the Thessalonians about three things where they and the other believers needed to have integrity or needed to do the right thing. Now I'm gonna to read to you from the Bible to show you what things Paul told them. The first one comes from 2 Thessalonians 3, verse two, and it says, and pray that we may be delivered from evil people, for not everyone has faith. So there are going to be people that don't believe in Jesus, and you need to pray for them and pray that they will learn to follow Jesus also. Now, the second thing that Paul told them to do is found in 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 to 5. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things that we told you. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. Perseverance is a pretty long word, but it means don't give up. Keep on reading God's word and not giving up. Now the third thing that he told them to do is found in verse 6 through 9. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, not to hang out with believers who are idle or disruptive and do not live according to the teaching you receive from us. You know you ought to follow my example. We were not idle when we were with you. We worked hard. We worked hard day and night. So if you don't work hard and you're just paying attention to other people's business instead of your own, Paul has said you need to watch out for that. None of us does the right thing all the time, but as we keep doing the right thing more and more, we will be known as people of integrity. When we do the right thing, one choice at a time, others will see that God is helping us and God will be praised. Well, let's see. 
Let's say a little prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you have come to this earth to take care of us, to save us from our sins, and to rise from the dead so that we could come back to heaven with you someday. Help us to have integrity. Help us to make the right choices every day, one at a time. Amen. Now I want to show you your craft today. And it is a little chain, a paper chain. And parents, when you see it on the website, it will look like this. You can print it on construction paper like I did, or you can pr print it just plain and color it. Cut apart the strips and either tape or staple or glue them together into loops. Now it says, live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. So go ahead and have fun with that. And I hope you had fun today in our Sabbath school lesson. Goodbye.